Hey everyone, uh, in this video, let me explain to you what is protein folding and what is protein degradation really in brief and to the point. So the protein folding. So and when a new protein is synthesized by a translation process, so as the translation is going on, so the newly synthesized protein, it enters into the rough end of the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then it starts folding up. So it basically it enters in the, from the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum, it enters into Golgi and from Golgi, it is uh, targeted to different uh, cellular locations. And also as the like some of the proteins that are synthesized in the cytoplasm over free ribosomes. So overall, how these new proteins are folding? Uh, that's the question here. So the protein folding process, it's a trial and error uh, process. So that means the information for a uh, native protein structure, it is already there in the primary structure of a protein molecule, which is determined by a gene. Okay. So then why do we need this protein folding process and why do you need these proteins that assist in protein folding process? So the reason for this is like uh, if there is no assistors for protein folding, it will take really like more time than that is required. So that's why we need uh, some proteins which can assist in protein folding process. So we are going to touch upon those proteins which will assist in protein folding process. Otherwise, as I told you before, that protein folding it's uh, like the entire protein structure overall structure of a protein that information it is already there in the primary structure of a protein molecule which is coming from a gene because the sequence of amino acids is ultimately determined by the the sequence of genes uh, so the sequence of the codons that are present in each gene coding for the protein let's look at uh, protein folding process in which are uh, different proteins that can assist so there are four uh, proteins that you need to remember uh, which will assist in protein folding process. One is chaperones, other is chaperonins, the third is uh, cis trans isomerase and the fourth is protein disulfide isomerase. Okay, so what all chaperones and chaperonins? Now the chaperones and chaperonins, these are the assistor proteins. So what they do is as the protein is coming out of uh, a ribosome like the mRNA and ribosome a newly synthesized the nascent protein or a polypeptide chain which is coming out. So the chaperones will go and bind to these proteins and uh, they are going to assist in the folding process because the folding itself is a trial and error process. Information is there in the amino acid sequence itself but this process is this folding process is enhanced by binding of chaperones. And once this happens and also so the, the, this particular uh, partially folded uh, protein enters into a barrel shaped uh, protein molecule called chaperonins. Now the chaperonin it has, as I said it has a barrel shape so the cap will open up and the protein enters in so the partially folded or uh, unfolded protein enters into the barrel and inside the barrel it is uh, uh, lined by um, uh, hydrophobic amino acids and once the barrel closes so the protein undergoes, well the polypeptide chain undergoes folding process. It's an energy requiring process, there will be uh, ATP spent to do this, but the thing is it will enhance the protein folding process and the fully folded protein will come out of the barrel and that is the functional protein which has got a low energy native conformation so that protein stays stable. So this is how uh, chaperones and chaperonines in brief how they will help in protein folding process. So remember two names, chaperones and chaperonins and protein folding in a, is an energy requiring process. Now there are two more proteins that can assist in protein folding process. One is cis trans isomerase. What is the function of cis trans isomerase? So as you know like uh, wherever proline comes in a polypeptide chain, so the, uh, the peptide bond that is with the proline is in trans configuration so what cis trans isomerase does is, it's going to change that uh, peptide bond just before the proline into trans config, uh, sorry, into a cis config, uh, configuration. From trans, it is going to be converting into cis configuration with the cis configuration. So it will help in uh, hairpin bends or something like that. That's why we know that proline, it is a uh, uh, helix breaker. It, wherever there is a proline comes in, so it will have a bend, loop, turn, coil, something like that. That's because the transpeptide bond will be converted to cis-peptide bond with the help of cis-trans isomerase enzyme. Now the fourth uh, 
uh, protein that helps in uh, protein folding process is uh, protein disulfide isomerase. That is there in the name disulfide bridge, disulfide isomerase. So what they will do? They are going to break the disulfide bond and help uh, have a part of a polypeptide chain to move around and recreate a uh, disulfide bond. So that means wherever there is a necessity to break the disulfide bond, protein disulfide isomerases, they will break and recreate the disulfide bond. So this is how overall protein folding will go on. So we need to remember four names here in protein folding process. One is chaperones, other is chaperonins, third is cis-trans isomerase and the fourth is protein disulfide isomerase. Let's move on to protein degradation for a brief, uh, in a brief way. Now, what is protein degradation? Now, when this protein degradation happens? Now, the protein degradation will happen whenever a protein is done with its lifetime and also whenever protein is damaged, mutated or an abnormal protein is there. So, body like our cells is going to detect there we have cellular mechanism to detect the defective proteins and this kind of defective proteins are uh, protein that are mean to degrade or that are mean to die so they need to be degraded that means they have the uh, this protein structure need to be opened up polypeptide chain has to be broken down into individual amino acids how that is done so protein degradation can be done by certain machineries in our uh, cells what are the mechanisms to degrade protein? We have lysosomes in the cell. The lysosomes, as you know, so they contain acidic media there, acidic pH. So the lysosomes are like uh, the, the things that need to be degraded is brought to the lysosomes and it can degrade all kinds of material, whether it is protein, carbohydrate, liquid, nucleic acid. It will take care of everything because it has got acid hydrolases. Acid, the acid stable enzymes, they are very specific for each of the things. Now, Protein can be degraded by uh, acid stable proteases in the lysosome. That's one way to degrade protein. So there is other way to degrade a protein and that is called a programmed cell death which is also referred as apoptosis process. So there, there is a detailed mechanism for apoptosis. Let's not go into the details of apoptosis here. So let's keep it for some other video. So that's another way to degrade a protein. Let's move on to the third way to degrade a protein and that is a 28S uh, proteasome. So ubiquitin, proteasome ubiquitin system here. So what is this 28S proteasome system? So the 28S proteasome, uh, it is a protein degradation machinery. So what, what, what happens in this protein degradation machinery? What are the requirement for 28S proteasome to be fully functional? So this 28S proteasome, so uh, as the name says, it is. It has a proteases. It has a. Uh, it is very specific for threonine, like amino acid threonine in a polypeptide chain. So we have uh, threonine proteases in there. So what exactly happens in 28S proteasome? Why it is called as 28S proteasome? So 28SS uh, uh, stands for subunits. That means this particular machinery has got 28 subunits. That's why it is called as 28S as per subunits. Proteasome. So, what is the requirement for 28S proteasome? So, any protein that is meant for degradation, so it has to be tagged with a, a low molecular weight protein called ubiquitin. So, there is something called as ubiquitin. Be careful with the term ubiquitin, which is not a ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is there in the electron transport chain. So, don't confuse with the ubiquinone with the ubiquitin. This is ubiquitin, T I N, quitin. So, ubiquitin is a small molecular weight protein. So, uh, this ubiquitin molecule has to be tagged with a protein that is made for degradation. Imagine this is the polypeptide chain that is made for degradation. This is the ubiquitin. So, somebody has to come and bring and attach ubiquitin to a polypeptide chain. So, who is going to do that? Obviously, enzymes. So, we have E1, E2, E3 ligases. So, these are the three ligases E1, E2, E3 ligases. So what they will do, they will bring ubiquitin molecules and attach to a protein that is meant for degradation. So the attachment of ubiquitin is a death signal for a polypeptide chain. So how many ubiquitin molecules do you need uh, for a 28S proteasome to be fully functional? So we need a minimum of four ubiquitin molecules to be attached, which we call it as a polyubiquitination process. Once four or more ubiquitin molecules are attached to a protein that is meant for degradation, so, which is done by E1, E2, E3 ligases. So, this particular polyubiquitinated protein is now ready for degradation by 28S proteasome. So, it will get into the 28S proteasome system and it will be broken down into individual amino acids by 
three uh, three amine kinases. Sorry, three amine proteases. This is how a polypeptide chain is broken down into individual fragments and eventually into individual amino acids. This is what is uh, a mechanism of degradation of protein by 28S proteasome. So we have, I have explained the uh, three ways to degrade a protein. One is 28S proteasome, second is apoptosis and the third is lysosome. So this is what is all about uh, protein folding process. We need to remember four uh, names there in protein folding. One is chaperones, chaperonins, cis trans isomerase uh, and protein disulfide isomerase. And in protein degradation, remember three process. One is 28S proteasome, which needs polyubiquitination, and the second is apoptosis, and the third is lysosomal protein degradation. Thanks for watching, and see you in my other videos.